of St. Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mount, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he started talking to them, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. <laughs> blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you, you falsely, on my account, rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. In our day, Teachers stand up and everyone else sits down. But in Jesus' day, the rabbis would sit and teach, and Jesus followed this great tradition. Crowds of eager listeners were following Jesus, and so he looked for a site where they could all hear him well. It is commonly believed that this Sermon on the Mount took place on a gentle hill between Capernaum and Tabga at the north end of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus had the beauty of the inland lake behind him as he taught, but all eyes were focused on Jesus because he spoke like no one before had ever heard. That afternoon, the hushed multitudes heard the religion of their world turned upside down, or should I say maybe right side up, for the first time in their lives. They heard something radically different than the Pharisees or scribes or anyone else was saying. Jesus began to speak in paradoxes and in riddles in the same way that the wisdom of the older days had been passed on. Jesus called the poor rich and the mourners comforted. He said that the meek were the heirs of the earth. <coughs> People listened. As they listened, they heard Jesus describe the qualities of the citizens of this new kingdom that he was bringing into the world <coughs> and giving us the Beatitudes Jesus taught us about real happiness. Now, happiness has become a lifelong goal for many. However, few people in our world experience lasting happiness. The average person living in a developed nation today enjoys a level of comfort and security unknown to those who lived in prior centuries. Has this prosperity brought peace and happiness? Quite the contrary. <coughs> Feelings of frustration, emptiness, and dissatisfaction run high in the world. Why do people have so much <coughs> feel so discontented? And along with seeking happiness, people want a peaceful life. The quest for peace, happiness, and well-being fostered that self-help movement that was so popular in the 1970s and 80s. Closely aligned with self-help was the misguided <coughs> New Age movement. Now, it is true that many people have helped, were helped by adding meditation, exercise, relaxation, and positive experiences to their lives. Other people found temporary pleasures of release and stimulation and depressants, but neither self-help exercises nor drugs <coughs> and alcohol can tap into the source of real happiness. There's a spiritual component to happiness, to happiness that has been overlooked by many people in our modern world. God provides an instruction book for life, the Holy Bible. I call this my spiritual GPS for God's plan for salvation. In the Beatitudes, Jesus explained the dimension that is missing in modern man's search for happiness, the spiritual element. When you feel you need to be happy, and who doesn't, 
Do not reach for a book with a title like I'm okay, you're okay, or feeling good, the new mood therapy. Reach for your Holy Bible and open up to Matthew chapter 5. Let Jesus tell you how to find true happiness. A key to happiness is an attitude of humble service. The message of Jesus was always a message of service. After Jesus finished washing the feet of his apostles, he told them that just as he had come to serve, so also they must serve one another. There's an old Chinese saying that goes like this. If you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. If you want happiness for a day, go fishing. If you want happiness for a year, inherit a fortune. But if you want happiness for a lifetime, spend time helping others. Now I think Jesus would have liked this saying, we should like it too. We should not only like it, but live our lives according to its wisdom. Sometimes you might feel down and out. We all have crosses, burdens we carry in our hearts. Some may struggle with a broken marriage. Some may have conflicts with parents. Others are brokenhearted because of watching their grown-up children suffer because of bad choices they seem to repeat over and over. Some are struggling with financial problems. Some suffer from illness, while others have family members who are ill. But we all have one thing in common. We need love. We need the love and mercy of Jesus. We also need the caring and compassion of others. And just as we need to be loved, we also need to love. So reach out to others in love and compassion, even when you're experiencing troubles and burdens and feelings, feeling lost and lonely. In fact, especially when you are troubled and lost and lonely. Now, when I was working on my master's degree, one of my professors gave me a little card. He had written a quote inside, a quote by Sidney Davis. I'll end with this quote. If you would want a friend, be a friend. If you would want success, work for it. If you want happiness, serve the needs of others. Amen. 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 So I want to ask you today to, first of all, look around at each other and be each other's prayer partners, prayer warriors, okay? We all need prayer. We're all together. You see all the faces of people around you. Don't forget to pray for each other. You don't know all their names, but you just pray for them. And I will pray for everybody here at Mass all week long. So that's your first thing. Second thing goes back to last week. I'll continue with what I asked you last week. Go out and try to fall in love with Jesus more and more. Okay? Remember, Jesus is just crazy in love with you, and you need to be just in love with Jesus with all of your heart and soul. Okay? And then thirdly now, with that love of Jesus in your heart, go out and serve the needs of others. So you have three assignments, and if you come back next week, you'll probably walk out with four, okay? So anyway, God bless all of you. Thank you so much. Pray for one another. I pray for all of you. Okay.